Tonight's Talk at 10, we're talking about cleaning up Onondaga Lake this summer. Dredging is scheduled to start. Officials are calling the $451 million phase of this cleanup project a milestone. Three barges will be running 24 hours a day for four years. I don't know how many hours that is total. I have to get <laughs> out of the calculator. Lot. Taking contaminated sediment from the bottom of the lake and then through these pipes about four miles away. The question is, will this make the water swimmable and drinkable one day? Those are the words, as Jim Kenyon reminded us today, that Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan uttered back in 1982. Our own Jackie Robinson was covering the senator mm -hmm. as he was campaigning and taking a little boat ride around the lake, which was way more polluted then. Than it is now. Than for it sure. is now. And today, it, it is a jewel in many respects, in a recreational sense uh, on the shoreline. But the water itself uh, still has some issues. Michael Benny joins us tonight for the Talk at 10, as he does every night. And we raised this question tonight. Do you buy into this idea? Swimmable? Maybe. Drinkable? Eesh. Drinkable's a tough sell. Drinkable, uh, drinkable's a really drinkable tough I sell. think, is still a, a generation uh, has to pass where, where they don't view the lake as the dirtiest Where, in where it's not synonymous with, with yeah. pollution. I agree with that. Swimming, it could be a tough sell, particularly for anyone who, I mean, even uh, if you're having kids like right now and you're 25 years old, you still sort of know, well, there's something not right about that lake. Uh, yeah. As nice as it looks, as you said, from the shoreline. So we may be talking one generation, maybe two generations, but... Well, well, they're not doing this for nothing. I'll go back the other direction. My, my grandmother, who has passed away, mm -hmm. but he, she was born in 1909, and she recalled going to the amusement parks out oh, at Long yeah. Branch, uh, yeah, taking, a, I guess it would have been a, the, the train they took out from the north side of Syracuse mm -hmm. and, and out there. And, and even my father, and he'll, uh, probably watching will correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he recalls also going from the north side and, and jumping in the water. I mean, they weren't supposed to do it because by then people knew, well, this lake's not very clean. Mm -hmm. They just didn't know how toxic it had become. So, so you go back uh, 70 years, 80 years, uh, within a couple of generations within reach, this was something people did, and then, then World War II on, then everybody knew, oh, don't do it. Yeah, don't go anywhere near it, you'll come you know? out green. Uh, and, and even, you know, you go back to the 70s, and, and, and then I, I recall seeing, uh, like, all the Syracuse China debris. I mean, they would just dump China mm -hmm. in there and, and raw sewage, and it was really, really disgusting then. Shameful. So, so you go out there now, big, big difference, isn't it? Yeah, first of all, the when you're on 690, I find that to be the most impressive when it comes to the actual work that's underway. Uh, there's a on very, the fairground yeah, side. On the fairground yeah. side. Very few among us uh, can speak for, for 30 seconds without hemming and hawing about what the actual work is that's going on. It's far beyond me, and I leave that to the environmental experts. But seeing uh, the barges in place and all of the work that's happened over the last couple of years to get us to the point where they were holding that news conference today to announce what will happen in the near term, uh, to me has always been uh, very impressive. Uh, it's comforting to know that, yes, uh, future children will do more with that lake yeah. than kids are doing it right now. The other thing that gets me is the creek walk through Syracuse, oh, which yeah. takes you from yeah. Armory Square and then plops you right out at the shoreline, just past Carousel Center Mall. And you're looking out, and, and the first two things I think of are, number one, finish this, and let's have it go all all the way around right and number two is wow this is right in our backyard and look what uh, look what people allowed to have happened yeah and look to this what, look what we almost have but we don't quite have uh, and and yeah. certainly several things have happened you talk about that shoreline the two big issues have been they've, they've put in this giant physical barrier to keep further contamination really from a wall yeah there's a wall yeah. deep into the earth there into some very soft gushy earth this will be the second big phase where they dig out a lot of the bottom even though the, the Native Americans in our community are not happy that it doesn't go far enough mm -hmm. and then the other big piece is, is that sewage treatment treatment plant uh, where technology and, and great uh, advancements in mm -hmm. how you treat sewage uh, and, and storm overflows, that and, is right, made how you keep rainwater out of to the system. keep it from getting more polluted. Those have been the, the major, major steps over the last 15 to 20 years. And, and, and I got to bring this up because mm. you and I were both at Channel 5 when we had the, the ultimate fishing challenge, yeah. the $5 million ultimate yes. fishing challenge, which I think was probably the best day on Onondaga Lake in the last, well, maybe the last 50 years. I mean, the to lake see was- all those boats. The, it was teeming with boats. Yes, yes, yeah. and people, now obviously they wanted a chance to win that $5 million prize, nobody did. But, but, but boat after boat came in with all these fish. I mean, it, it is an extensive fishery. In fact, very, 
very quickly. We've go to just yeah, to our computer. Cool. I, I got to show you. This is the list of all the species in there, and it's probably too tight to read for you. But but we have uh, you know bluegill, bullhead, obviously carp have been famous for being there. Uh, catfish, uh, minnows, which are the smaller, obviously end of the spectrum. Northern pike, which could be quite large. Rock bass. You, you oh, were, you left out Johnny Darter well, for the uh, uncommon well, the species. great the great Johnny Darter. He started <laughs> off. Uh, I think he what, didn't he return kicks for Syracuse football. I think he used to play was, along the shoreline Kirby at Darter. some of the concerts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so there's a lot going on out there. We didn't even get to talk about the regatta, which used to be a big deal on, on the shoreline, which was the biggest party uh, in the history mm -hmm. of Central New York, way before Taste of Syracuse was popular. So there's a lot of history there, and let's hope it's a positive one in the future and to keep this going on the right track. A lot of problems, but could be a real asset, don't you think? Yeah, it'll, it will look back at this with, with a lot of shame for what was allowed to happen, but, but also I think a lot, of, um, a lot of promise for what could be yeah. on that lake. We'll, we'll toast to Onondaga Lake. With, with not Onondaga Lake water. It's fresh water from Skinny Atlas. Thank you. My, <laughs> thank you, Michael, for joining us tonight at Talk at 10. You gotta make light of it a little bit, don't you? Post your comments on our website and also on our Facebook page.